Hello, this is Noseman from the Maxon training team. And in today's quick tip, I'm going to show you how to affect cloners sequentially based on their index number. Let's start with a very quick overview of what a MoGraph clone index is. And for this purpose, I'm just going to use a matrix object. Now, if you go to the transform tab of the matrix and in the display, you select index, you will see a bunch of numbers. Let me make them darker so they're a bit more visible. These are the clone indices. And as far as the structured cloners, for example, the grid or the linear and so forth, these are created by the cloner itself. But if you're using an object, for example, a cube, and use that as an object source for the cloner, and uh, set the distribution to be something like polygon, for example, you will see that the clone indices are the same as the polygon or point indices. And just to make sure this is correct, go to the options, select polygon indices, and go to polygon mode, and select the cube. And what you will see is indicated in red, and if I turn this off, you will see that they have exactly the same indices. Based on that information, let's set this up. I'm going to use a sphere source object. I'm just going to show the line so I can see how many polygons I have. I'm just going to make them a bit fewer. And now I'm going to go and create a MoGraph cloner. And in the cloner, I'm going to use a cone that's oriented on the Z axis. And I'm going to scale it down so it's a bit smaller and make it a child of the cloner. Control double click here just to show all the names. Tell the cloner to be in object mode and drag the object in here and just change this to polygon center. Fantastic. Now we have a cone on each polygon. So I want these to pop up one at a time using their index in a certain time frame. So with the cloner selected, let's go to the MoGraph menu and add a plane effector. And in the parameters, I'm going to set the parameter to be the position Z. I'm going to set it to 50 centimeters. Now, how do we move these sequentially? Well, go to the fields and use a formula field. In the formula itself, go and remove everything and type ID is smaller than, I'm going to put T here for starters, which is the time, and ID is the component index. Now, if I rewind and press play, you'll see that every 30 frames, which is one second, a new cloner is going to pop up. Just to make it a bit more interesting, let's go to the plane effector, turn off the color, and uh, select the cloner, and go and add a delay effector, and go to the effector and set it to spring. So now the effect is a bit more interesting, and they pop up a bit nicer. Now, what if I want to change the frequency by which these pop up. So first of all, let's increase our timeline. All you have to do is go to the formula field, open up your variable so you see what's going on. And instead of T, use the other time, which is the D. The difference with the D, which is the delta time, the time difference, is that it complies to this little percentage. And if I set it to, let's say, a thousand percent, it becomes 10 times faster. And there you have it. You can now, based on the index of each clone, affect the clones with any effector you want. If you enjoy our quick tips, please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications so you never miss another quick tip.